that. Yeah, it's awesome. Last time I was here is when we were doing the installs for the garage. Oh yeah, yeah. So with with this wall, um, you know you know what I was wanting to do is what I, what I think we're gonna do is have the the um, the logo create you just there in the middle of the wall, so that if we don't use the TV, it's there anyway. It's there. I mean, I use a tape measure, but this app is what we use for the proofing. And this is what we'll use for the digital mock-up. And this will have measurements on it. <laughs> yeah, it's simple. And it's better than chicken scratch handwriting. experience right there like boom check it out so my man Reed let's check this out it'd be right there where that open window is the big wide one yeah and and the one next to it you think with the one the one that's open as well oh you're right here I'm the, yeah right there yeah uh, like a big line, and then you'd probably want your your podcast name, like the like the name, like the hat. You, you know, you know what we can do? We can uh, have the. Um, I'll just have my Instagram on there, because when people go to my Instagram, they're gonna see it everywhere. It's gonna be yeah. create you experience. So whatever's gonna draw attention to. Alright, so Reed's here, he's on the phone, businessman, killing it like always. We're gonna go upstairs, install this bad boy, and it's time for the podcast. Down to the home stretch, Ink Monsters. That's what I'm talking about. My man Reed, what do you think, huh? Reed? He's doing a fucking amazing job. Yes. Amazing job for someone that's been in business for 15 years. <laughs> yeah. This one cracks me up. Creative? No. Oh, the one getting bullied? The guy yeah. getting bullied? Why? Huh? What story? Don't fuck this one up. You're almost there. Almost Look, there. Right? Almost there. Don't mess it up. So why do you love to do this though? Like, you're, um, you put wallpaper on walls. Yeah, you bring visions to life and stuff through like what's on the side. But like, what well, is it? It's more about it? the creativity of making things. Mm. Like, I like to make tangible things. 
and this is this is an art form. It's not just putting wallpaper up to do it perfectly and to wrap buildings and to wrap cars and you know manufacture all this stuff from an idea to printing it, which printing is an art in itself, to the installation and the art of installation. And you know when somebody like yourself comes to me, like how excited are you to have this in your space? Right. You know, this means the world to you. Yeah, this shit means the world you to know? me. Man. So for me to be a part of that, um, that's gratifying to me. All right, so there you have it. Create you. This is the wall of peace, baby. I'm not even gonna explain today what it's all about. We're gonna get into the Create You experience in just a second. But first of all, I just wanna give a big, big thank you to Reed, the owner of What's up, guys? Monster. And we're gonna jump into it in about two seconds. But first, I wanna ask you a question. Are you prepared today to get vulnerable? Are you prepared to be a visionary? Are you ready to get energized? Because Reed and I, we're on a mission. We're on a mission. Come join us. Hey, my name is Brennan Myers, and welcome to the Create You Experience, where we ignite your breakthrough, create your experience, and bring your vision to life. Uh, I can't sit around and wait till it goes right Cause I've been hopping over obstacles my whole life I got a vision and I know it's about to take flight I'm dedicated to growth, I keep my mind right I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable Anything in my way, I'ma break through Lights, camera, action, take two Can't worry about what they do, you gotta create you Welcome to the Create You Experience As you heard it, my name is Brennan Myers and today we have someone special, actually unique. Sorry, I, for some reason I always start off as special, but we're not special. We're fucking unique. I feel special and unique. Yes, because your name is Reed Silberman. Yes, you sir. You actually, he really wanted me to make sure I was saying it right. I, I you respect got it. That. You nailed it. Yeah, Good did job. I? Yeah. Okay. Good job. Sweet. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm going to school for uh, for grammar. Good enunciation. Is that doesn't even make any sense when I say like, hey, I'm going to school for grammar. It's grammatically correct. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Reed. Anyways, guys, uh, welcome to the Create You Experience. If you're watching here on YouTube, um, and if you're actually on audio platforms, here on YouTube, we always create an experience before we actually begin the podcast so you can learn a little bit more about the guest and what kind of goes on in their life and, and how uh, I've collaborated with them. And we actually put up the wall behind us with all the beautiful words. Um, Reed is actually the owner of Ink Monster, and he's a former snowboarder. Uh, you would say professional, right? I would say sponsored snowboarder, professional coach. Okay, so he's so. a professional snowboarder. That sounds fantastical. <laughs> and I, was snow I was a snowboarder for a living for 10 years. Sweet, yeah. sweet. And so Reed is someone that I reached out to because I wanted to get my wall done, but I started to learn more about what he has created, and I was inspired, and I was like, you know what, man? I need you. I need you on the podcast. So Welcome, man. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. It's a pleasure, really. Yeah, no, and uh, Reed and I have had the opportunity to really, really connect in different ways. We both kind of went through a similar program for for legacy, for for really transformational work, right? Yeah. And um, it, he's just he's just an incredible guy. Um, he puts aside all of his judgment, and he puts aside all of his negativity, and he's learned how to shift and really create himself, create not only himself, but people around him. And that's why Ink Monster is so successful today. So Ink Monster. Yes, sir. Been on TV. Yes. You've been traveling a lot. Yes. You tell them what Ink Monster is all about. So Ink Monster is a creative graphic design studio. We do graphic design, cups of printing, large format wraps, windows, walls, floors, buildings, trade show. We do custom sublimation and fabric printing and custom cut and sew apparel. We have our own sew shop. Uh, we're a lifestyle brand. We're the first lifestyle brand in my industry. And what does that mean? I mean, uh, there's never been, you know, you have your fast signs, your Kinko's, you know, different types of printing companies. And I was the first person in my industry to create an artistic lifestyle brand with a consumer following and we work with businesses so that doesn't even make sense in my industry no one's ever tried it I didn't even know if it was possible if it could be created and 
15 years later, we're, we're known as the artistic lifestyle brand in the printing industry nationwide. Shit. So basically, if you want to change your skin color, or if you want to <laughs> go to read now, five ninety nine. <laughs> no, but that, that is really inspiring because you started, tell them where you started. You started in a car or a truck? Yeah, was well, it? you know, when I left New York, I, I was a Wall Street broker for five years. Uh, was in that game, the whole Wolf of Wall Street ring. Oh, hold racket. on, hold on. Before you go any further, what, tell us about that. Well, that was a time period in my life where I was extremely hungry, money driven, motivated by money only. I would do anything to make a buck. And I had the opportunity to get my series seven license, become a stockbroker, work on wall street. And I, I lived that lifestyle. It was, it was exactly like the movie. I mean, that was <laughs> Jordan, Jordan Belford nailed it as executive producer. You know, that's the guy that started all of yeah, that. Yeah. 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 And, um, that's exactly dude, dude, the way it was. Dude, that literally reminds me of my life because I go to sleep at like 9 p.m. every night. So it's definitely Wolf of Wall Street status. <laughs> so, I mean, it was <laughs> rock star lifestyle, guys. It was, you know, uh, but, it, but it also had an inverse effect on me. Like all my, all my negative attributes, uh, everything that would be considered false were virtues in that job. And it made me great at it. Mm. And at the exact same time, it wore on my soul. It wore on my conscience, meaning I started to create one. So it actually was igniting, it was all, igniting. all the bad shit that, that like came up for you in and, your life. And then it made me not want to be that person anymore. So I immediately quit my job, <laughs> bought a one-way ticket to, to Colorado, never been here before, heard it was the best place to snowboard on the planet. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I made a commitment to myself that I would never take a job again solely for the money. It had to be passion, purpose, something that I love to do. Right. And that's it. And that's all that mattered. Because prior to that, my entire life was about money. So that was it. On a plane, packed a bag, had no job, no place to live. It was do or die. So, that was it. so it, what, what you can gather from what he just said is stop thinking that everything is about money or like the dollar is going to make you or, or just break, got make or break you. Yeah, you get goosebumps <laughs> because, because it's, it's mind-blowing what you went through. And how many people relate to that in a way that they're, they're like, I want that. But the truth is what holds you back. It, yeah. Number one, what holds you back. But number two, are your goals falsifying your true vision mm -hmm. and what you want to create? Because if it is, then you need to shift just like you did. And so when you started to get into snowboarding and then when you, you uh, transferred over from snowboarding more into ink monster and building that, like, where was that? Cause let's well, get it back all to came from track. snowboarding. So because I was doing everything out of passion and because of the love for what I was doing, I loved it so much. You're willing to commit, sacrifice, do what it takes. There, there is no such thing as no, I'm not willing to do that. You know, whatever it was, I was all in. So because of that, it made me a very successful snowboarder. It made me a successful coach. I made my sponsors happy. I made all the people I was working with happy. I made my students happy. I would always go above and beyond willing to do what everybody else wasn't mm. because I just loved it so much. They yes, didn't even man. think twice. So I developed all these relationships and you know, you don't make much money as a snowboarder. And, uh, so I was coaching, uh, the Aspen high school snowboard team at the time. Wait, 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 wait. there's a, there's a high school snowboard. No, team? Colorado has high school teams and college teams. So I coached the CU oh, college team as well. Um, <laughs> Where that came from was I was a coach at Wendell Snowboard Camp in Oregon. It's a glacier, so I was spending my winters in Colorado, my summers in Oregon working on the glacier, became head coach of that camp, and that's where I was introduced to vinyl graphics and graphic design and, and, and printing. And I started working for the camp as a part-time graphic installer for their sponsors. Dude, dude, oh, okay, let me pause this really quick. <laughs> I'm just going to pause this because this, this really is very interesting. First of all, look at, look at his website. Like, look how professional it is. I just wanted to give you some big daps. Give me some daps real quick. Thanks. Okay, sweet. I'm now going to remove it so it's not having people having seizures the whole time. So removing. And now I, I, I really want to focus in on your, your unique approach to what you've created. And more importantly, how your passion is much different than other people. Or so we may think as a society. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say different. I don't think, I mean, passion's passion. Right. And that's subjective to the person who's passionate about what they're passionate about. So it's not that 
my passion is different. It's just that I know what I'm passionate about. Mm. And I took the steps to make it my lifestyle, make it my living. My purpose was to make what I'm passionate about my living. And I believe that if you do what you love, do what you're passionate about, the money will follow. If you're not making it about the money, you're making it about passion. You can literally make money doing anything on this planet this day and age. Yeah. You can even so, sell silly putty on the side of the road. You can sell silly. If you're passionate about it, you'll be the <laughs> best silly putty salesman ever on the planet. Dude, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a tongue twister. A silly putty salesman. Silly putty I, salesman. I went to silly grammar putty school putty. too. <laughs> Did you? Annunciation in, college. In, no, it, <laughs> Annunciation college. Um, dot com. Go. So, you know, basically uh, that's when I was living in my van. You know, uh, I was saving money, living in my ba my van, trying to start the business, trying to save money, living in my van in Aspen, living in my van in Oregon. So whatever the season was, just traveling in the van and to specifically save money to start the business because the snowboarder income was great. It paid for beers and, and some food. Mm, what's your favorite beer? Uh, you know, I'm not really a beer drinker anymore, but I like a wheat. You know, a I'm, wheat beer. I, I, I'm gluten free. I, I yeah. like a wheat I'm, beer. I'm gluten free. I man. like whiskey. Hate to tell you. And wine. You know, a nice uh, red wine. Ooh, Merlot. No, I mm, like yeah, me a, um, Malbec. Malbec. Amen. Argentinian. We're wine. brothers. We're brothers now. And uh, a nice fine whiskey or bourbon. Ooh. Um, on the rocks. Neat. 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 I don't neat. like to water neat. down my. Have you ever seen the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the like neat 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 neat? Yeah. <laughs> Only that? neat. So, um, so, so that's amazing. So you, you really started in, in, in your car and you're living in my van and you're renting, hold on, you're renting. I can't get enough of this one. You were renting a piece of driveway, basically. That's what happened. So, <laughs> that's great. you know, the first couple of months in Aspen, you know, I got invited to coach this team, the Aspen high school team. Uh, Aspen's an expensive place to live and I'm trying to launch a business. So this is really where passion and commitment come in. What are you really willing to do? Mm. People say, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. What does that really mean these days? Like how you know, far? Because, oh, everything except for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, well, I was willing to do whatever it took. And if that meant living in my car, renting a driveway, you know, having my little sticker machine on my friend's kitchen, you know, that, okay, great. Don't even think twice. You just do it. Was it a dirt driveway? It, or it was paved. paved. It was oh, paved. Yeah, bougie. <laughs> but before that, there was no driveway. There was, you know, two months of living in my van with no heat, you know, keeping the car running, 27 blankets, so basically, you know, my puffy coat. So, so what you're saying is get the fuck up and do what you love if you actually want to do it. And do Nothing it, and do it with you. all that you have. Because it will literally come to true. Turn like, your brain off. Turn your heart on. Start, stop thinking about what is not possible and everything that could go wrong. And just stay on track with what you're passionate about, what your focus is. Stay focused. Mm. Keep connecting to your vision. But it's so hard to it, see. I uh, never said it, it was it, easy. It, it is very. Okay. It's great. <laughs> this is perfect. It's very hard to stay focused and to stay on track. That's with why that you passion. need a vision and a passion. Because when it gets hard... What are you going to connect to? You know, when it gets hard, okay, well, this is my vision. Is this in line with my vision? Is this in line with my purpose and my passion? Yes or no? Okay, right. well, then I got to do it. Right. And the rest falls in place. And that's how all the doors for Ink Monster open. So, so, so let me ask you something. If someone's listening or watching, and I remember, guys, we're on YouTube, and they're, they're thinking in there, <laughs> he's, he's doing a little, uh, the gnar show, the gnar, bro. Oh, surf's, surf's up. up. Dude, we're in Colorado, man. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. Oh. Yeah, it's illegal. <laughs> You're, <laughs> You're going to get arrested. I just got back from Costa Rica. That's why I'm all bronze, though. Oh, wow, man. Yeah. Bronze. Baby. Ooh. I'm more of a gold guy, but it's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> where was I? <laughs> uh, you said uh, I don't know. I, I, passion I, and purpose. Yeah, yeah. So, like, what if someone that's listening or watching yeah. doesn't know what their passion is or doesn't know how to, how to Great. discover it? I love this question because I do talks with high school kids elementary school kids, college kids, like don't, you're not a product of your environment. You're not a victim to your circumstances, you know, follow your dreams. And I get this question a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I'm passionate about. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't, I don't know what I love. Great. Go try a million different things. It's really important that you figure out what you don't want and you figure out what you don't like. Wow. And that'll lead you to your, I've tried, I, I did so many different jobs. I was a landscaper. I worked in restaurants. I cleaned toilets. I was a janitor. 
Uh, you know, I did everything. I worked in the fashion industry. I sold clothes. I did this. I did. I worked I, at Dick's Sporting Goods. Dick's Sporting Goods. I mean, but the people are so afraid to uh, try something new. Well, what if I don't like it? Well, how are you going to know? It's even relationships too, right? It's relationships. like, we're, put we're yourself like out there. Oh my gosh. This opens up a whole other, another can no, of whole, We're going to have a whole yeah, other we, podcast. We can have a whole other podcast. <laughs> we will. We will. But, but I knew what I didn't want. And that led me to feeling confident and knowing what I do want. But people aren't willing to spend that time, that time commitment, that time scarcity. Like, oh, well, what if I waste my time doing that? Well, what if you waste your time not doing it? You're never going to know. Right. You know, especially these days, I think people these days, uh, everything happens lightning fast. You know, everything is internet based and, and happen and people's patience and willingness to spend time and invest time in they're, they're so focused on figuring out what they want. They don't find out what they don't want. And I think that's a really key component. Try a million different things. That's why I think our school system is broken because they force you to figure out what you want. Pick mm. your major. They should, people should be taking a sabbatical, going off for two years, trying 20 different internships, traveling the world, getting some experience. They do that, in, the, they do that in, in European countries they and around the world. Air, yeah. Isn't it interesting? Because when I'm in Santa Monica or Venice Beach and people come to visit, they're like, oh my gosh, Brennan, like I can't, I, I'm so glad I'm here, whatever. I'm on holiday. I just graduated from like, what I, I guess it's called grade school or whatever they call it there. And I'm going to be going to university, but they have like a year to figure things out or yeah. like, People in Israel, they, they have those two years that yeah. they have to go to the army. They go to the military. Military, yeah. after they're out, they go and they travel yeah. and they ex experience, even though they're 23, 24 years old when they're cutting out. Like, I was so blessed to be forced. I, I had my first job at 11. I cleaned toilets. I made cash. It was awesome. Wow. You know, I, I didn't was care. Was there a lot of shit that, that there you was, saw? There was a lot of shit, you know, on the walls, <laughs> on the floor. I'm like, how does shit get on the roof of this? Like, how does that happen? Um, were you the guy, were you the guy that like went into the, all the bathrooms and started like, tracing out like different letters and like different words on the stalls and stuff. And you were like, Hey guys, when you sit down on the toilet, I would dial the numbers, the you know, <laughs> uh, but I had cash, you know, we yeah. grew up super poor, dirt poor, had nothing, you know, broken home, uh, father working two jobs, supporting the family. And if I wanted it, I had to buy it myself. So instead of waiting around or being the victim, I went and got a job, you know, and, and I was blessed to have that work ethic and, willingness to do anything uh at a very young age and i was blessed because i had a lot of different jobs and and trying all those i was a computer technician before i was a stockbroker i worked in the warehouse i went to tech school like, so you were basically the united states of america yeah pretty wow, much. wow man that's very interesting that's yeah. a big job so it's <laughs> a big job yeah did it work like and i and i thought okay this is gonna be what i do for the rest of my life and then I became a broker. This is what I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And then I did a little bit of uh, uh, um, fashion sales. I was a, I was a rep for some fashion companies, like as a as a, uh, a freelance. So you so you so, so dude, this is what I want to do so, for the rest so, of my so life. You, so you've literally done it all. So you could not all, but you've experienced so much so you could see what you don't want. And now you you own a business that's very very successful. That and you have all these other opportunities because I actually believe because of the experiences that you've been through. And all the things that you know you don't want to do, you've actually made these connections that's now allowed this yeah. business that you're passionate about to succeed well, even more than you can think when you know when you know. It's like you, you talked about relationships. Well, how many girls have you dated your entire life? Four. Yeah. <laughs> we get it now. We get it. Uh, Six. A few. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we've all had a few relationships <laughs> in our lives, right? A few and, hundred thousand. And, <laughs> and let's say you had 10. Well, you learn something from every one of those relationships and then you know what you want and you know what you don't want. And the next person you meet, you know, you, you're thinking to yourself, does this person have what I want or not want? Right. Or, or maybe you learn stuff about yourself, about how you act in a relationship or treat other people. So uh, it's really important that, you know, you're willing to do that in relationships and, you know, why not with your career? Mm. You know, so, so you're, how you do one thing is how you do everything. That's yeah, true. <laughs> Both in, baby. Both in. Your words, your world. It's so, so, all right. In order to, for you to have these perspectives on life and perspectives on business and perspectives on relationship, because mm -hmm. remember relationships, everything, like mm -hmm. literally everything. What type of work did you have to do? Not have to, what, what type of work did you get to do that kind of like shifted this, these mindsets and all this negativity that was in your mind to a whole new level? What are some things that you had to learn about yourself and get uncomfortable with? 
the number one thing that, I wouldn't say the number one thing, but a, a main thing that kept me going for a long time, and this is before this past year. This past year has been completely different than the rest of my life. It's been, it's been the crossroads and the next level. Yep. So before this past year, it's just been perseverance, dedication, commitment, one day at a time, and a lot of faith. You know, uh, I don't believe in luck. I believe on, you know, put in the work and God blesses you. Mm. I, I don't believe in, oh, that guy got lucky. Well, you know, they, they say that, you know, overnight successes were in the making for, you know, 10, 15 years, right? Amen, man. So yeah. um, a lot of heartache, a, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of, you know, I called myself the Tasmanian devil of destruction in relationships, you know. I lost a lot of really great relationships, a lot of really great friends. I had to sacrifice family. I, I, I made, you know, everybody's going out, doing all the fun things. And I'm focused. I'm staying up till 2, 3, 4 in the morning, you know, working three jobs, committing to my business, doing whatever it took. So, you know, without suffering and sacrifice, there's no joy and reward. It's yin and yang. Mm. You can't have one without the other. You can't have a perfect life and then appreciate everything that has come to you. you know. So there was a lot of pain and suffering and sacrifice and commitment. And as the business grew, now you know, I have three employees, six employees, you know, then we have 14 employees. And you know, now we're a seven-figure business. Now we're working with the biggest corporations in the world, Red Bull, GoPro, MTV, uh, you know, Brendan Mont Myers, you Brendan, know, you forgot. Brendan Myers, yeah, yeah. uh, doing beautiful murals for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, what can I say? <laughs> you know, and everybody in between, you know, we we're working with Lockheed Martin doing stuff that's going into space. Wow. So, you know, all these projects, all these pressure, you know, now I'm managing staff now. So the, the shift was, you know, the big turning point for me is I never learned how to be in relationship. I was so isolated my whole life, so disconnected, so shut down, had no vulnerability. You and I both. That's why. That's actually why we connect so much yeah. because like it, the, the truth is that for me, in order to get to where I am today and what I'm planning and the strategies and everything, I, to be honest, I think, I think it was the greatest benefit that, that I've gotten out of my life up yeah. till a certain point. And then I was able to see that, whoa, wait a second. My relationships are, are so out of whack. My best friends I thought were my best friends they're not really my best friends because I'm not showing up as a best friend. Yeah. It's not about them. Like it's actually a mirror all over and around us, right? It's Everything's like even our all teams, about me. Even, even <laughs> our like 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 for me, I have 11, 12, I, I forget how many employees. But you know, our team, it's like at first I, I was trying to build my team for like six years and I just couldn't grasp it. I was like, what am I doing wrong? What I couldn't and once I started to tap into myself and see why, like why things are wrong mm -hmm. around me, they were in myself, yeah. I really started to succeed. So what would you say about that as far as like your business and growing? Well, I had to fail before I can be successful again. So I thought I was successful. I won, this is 2016 was the turning point. I won Colorado State Small Business Person of the Year out of 600,000 businesses. Wow. That was a tremendous feat. Like I, I was so blessed with that award. Uh, we won Best Print Shop in Denver three years in a row. Uh, you know, we're getting write-ups with you know, five covers of magazines. We won uh, 2017 Colorado Companies to Watch, top 50 companies in Colorado. You know, and we're still a small business to second stage business. There's way bigger businesses than us, and we're still getting these accolades. My ego was through the roof. My image was through the roof. What people thought about me and... You know, I didn't know how to communicate well with people. I didn't have the skills to um, express myself. You know, lack of vulnerability, not uh, being able to express myself or communicate what I want effectively or how I treated people. Everything was. Can just, you give an example of like struggling with like the authenticity or vulnerability from a standpoint? A any type of example. Just, just having to be, never show my feelings, never show my emotions. Uh, being tough, you know, being condescending to people, very high expectations. I have very high expectations for myself. When people didn't live up to my expectations, you know, I got very short with people and mm. um, wasn't inspiring, encouraging, motivating. I, I ruled with an iron fist. I ruled by fear. 
instead of positivity, acknowledgement, and encouragement. Mm. So that was the change. So, you know, the business started to fail. You know, everything was downward spiraling. You know, uh, I, I was sitting on my high horse with all these awards, thinking that I don't have to work as hard anymore, you know, let my team do this or that, and I could sit back and reap the benefits of my labor for the past X amount of years, since 2004 is when I started the business. And that was my downfall. And then that's when I started to, you know, everything was spiraling out of control. We're losing business. You know, we're not making numbers. You know, things are, are not going well. So that's what brought me to transformational work and um, building awareness of, around who I am, why, what's holding me back from being successful. You know, my fears are what made me, quote unquote, successful, but also my, my lack of feeling worthy enough to be more successful held me back and caused me to sabotage every relationship. That's why I called myself the, the Tasmanian devil yeah. of destruction in relationships. So I had to get knocked off my pedestal. I feel like God was humbling me at the time and teaching me very valuable lessons. And now we're back on the way up. Right. You know, so this past year, uh, I don't want to say calendar year, but the past uh, 12 months has been on mm -hmm. the rise again. Yeah. So... And then finding the balance of not being the iron fist. Because I went from iron fist to Gandhi as I'm going through this work. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, everything's great. And uh, trying to be positive and encouraging to everybody and everything's okay. And, you know, but then I was getting, my worst fears came to reality because then yeah. I was getting taken advantage of. Because when you're not vulnerable, your fear is people will take advantage of me. Yeah. They will. Uh, and then when you're vulnerable, you're like, you're like, you're like, hey, I, I, no one's going to Take yeah, advantage right. of me and then they so start. So the, the true growth has been coming in finding that balance between the two. And, uh, but, I think, but I think where the biggest fear lies, and I, I, could, I can attest to this myself. So you're going through life. You're creating this passion. You're, cre you're really trying to work on this vision. And let's say things are going very well, just like you said. And things are going really, really well. And all of a sudden it starts peering off. Maybe you plateau a little bit in your life or your relationship or whatever it's happening. And then all of a sudden you're going down a slippery slope, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going so fast down. You're like, wait a second, what's happening in my business? What's happening in my relationship? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And then people are telling you, hey, you got to work on yourself in order to get out of this. That is scary. That is super scary because you're like, wait a second. So you're telling me to take time off of my business, to take time off of my relationship take time off of my passion in order to work on myself in one of the most crucial parts yeah. of me focusing. Where's that shift? How do you, how do you just go with, do you just go with it and just say, Hey, fuck it. I'm just all in or what? Yeah. To sum it up, you do. Um, I was ready. You know, I was really at the bottom. Like I hit rock bottom emotionally. I was, uh, you know, my girlfriend dumped me. I was pointing the finger at everybody else. My employees were all, I, I lost my, my entire staff. I had a full turnover. Everybody, you know, even though we're this award-winning company and it takes a certain type of excellence to get to that point, you know, I worked them to the point where, yeah, we were successful, but they weren't happy, mm. you know? So, uh, you know, everything is falling apart in my life, my relationships, my employees. Um, I don't know who I am. I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm just emotionally rock bottom. And, um, you know, I'm pointing the finger. It's, it's her. It's my girlfriend. It's not me. It's my employees. They can't handle it. They're weak. They're soft. They can't oh, handle it. It's man. not them. You know, it's not me. It's them, you know? And um, it, it, it took a rude awakening for, to realize that, you know, I do have to take a really good, hard look at myself and change from within. You know, I got to say, I had a Jesus moment. You know, uh, I grew up a, as a Christian, but, um, you know, I was begging Jesus. I'm like, listen, you know, crying out. Like, I can't take this anymore. Please, yeah. like, change my heart from the inside because I can't feel this way anymore. I just can't. Like, I, I'm, I'm sick and tired, you know? And I realized that I wasn't able to feel his love because 
I was so filled with bitterness, resentment, anger, you know, uh, holding on to the past, um, unforgiveness, yeah. you know, and I, I, I needed to release a lot of what was going on in my life and forgive a lot of people in my life and circumstances and forgive myself for things that I've done to people or done to myself and empty my cup of all that hatred mm. to be able to fill it up again with, you know, God's love and then move on with my life and start over again. So that's where I've been the past year is this crossroads of what's next is, you know, learning how to be a different leader, a better leader, a better boss. Uh, and I don't even allow my employees to use the word boss. You know, I, I, I sit right next to them. I work right next yeah, to them. We're all, we're, we're all a part of the vision. You know, it's, it's, it's a team. And dude, I, yeah, this, this is man. All I got to say is like, th this is absolutely th just the way so you're successful, right? And and people are probably listening or watching right now, and they're like, "This is this is kind of mind blowing." How? And sorry, my my phone's going off, but it's it's mind blowing that you're actually doing what people might think that's like, "Oh, this is absurd." Like, why would I focus on myself? I'm trying to build a business. I need to focus on the business. Extreme and it's like, circumstances take extreme measures. What are you willing to do? You know, how far are you willing to go? You know, how far outside your comfort zone, which is really, are you willing inside? to be <laughs> like, are you going to have that conversation with your mom that you've always needed to, or, yeah. or, or that, that relationship or the person that molested you, Whatever can you, will you have a relationship or a, a conversation and forgive them? Yeah. It's like going to the deepest of the deep in your life. That's, that's, it's the dark, scary place, guys. Like you, you have to go to the closet, all the skeletons. All the scary things, everything you've been suppressing and burying, like you want the next level of what's possible for your life, you know, the past will chain you from your future. Mm. You know, that's what's going to hold you back. So until you're really willing to do whatever it takes, like, okay, as, a, as an employer, I interview a lot of people. Yeah. And we talk about expectations and uh, positive attitude and commitment and sacrifice. And this is a lifestyle. This is, you know, we live, breathe, eat this. You know, this isn't clock in, clock out, nine to five. This is our lifestyle. Yeah, really. You know, what are you willing to do? Are you willing to do whatever it takes? And, oh, yeah, like I'll do anything. And they beg me for the job. And they tell me everything I want to hear. By the way, if you're interviewing, just be honest. Just be real. Keep Authentic real, and vulnerability is, is key. Yeah, yeah wins key. all day. Cause I can see right through people's bullshit and, and, and then they get the job and they end up crumbling at a certain point and they crumble almost immediately. But I think, I, I think it's because actually, I don't think I know this is my opinion, of course, that when people come in for a lot of interviews, they're coming from scarcity mm. immediately. Like they're, they're sitting down they're like, Oh yeah, I love, I love videography or like, Oh, I, I love the code or, Oh, I love graphic design. Oh, I love putting, you know, murals on the wall or wallpapers. I love designing this. I love creating that. But either they've never experienced how hard it is like to do it themselves to a certain point where they're like, yeah, maybe I don't really know this. Or they're coming from a place of I need money. I, I just need I need a job. I need something. And I actually do like this, but I don't love it. And that's the big difference in building a massive vision and a massive business and, and something that you're so proud of and impacting people is when it comes down to what you're truly passionate about and if you believe the vision i mean yeah if it here's the thing on the wall you're looking at like i'm looking for passion is what i'm looking for I, you know oh fuck man <laughs> don't do this to me man don't do this to me we'll fix it it's behind the wall i mean i sorry it's behind the tv it's behind create you but it's the number one thing yeah. with without passion uh there is no commitment sacrifice I don't have passion on uh, there. there's no energy <laughs> there's no joy you know, there's no excitement. There's no fired up. Ink Monster was built. It was a word of mouth referral based business. We never advertised. We never did any sort of promote. Well, we did events. But the word of mouth and referral, people wanted to work with me because they were drawn to my passion, my excitement, my commitment. Right. You know, I didn't like have billboards or do target marketing or, you know, everything that you do for your, for your people and your clients. I didn't know anything about any of that. Right. So 10 years straight, it was all built off of just 
how much I loved it. And they're like, Reed's the best. And it showed in my craft. Right, right, yeah. You know, so it's all passion. I see, see, and it's, it's very similar to me. Um, I'm, I literally, <laughs> I'm so passionate about everything, like kind of most things that I touch. It's like, I really just care so much about it. Like, so for instance, not everything, but many things. So like guitar, if I pick up a guitar, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. Right. And, and sometimes it gets to a point where like, I can't, I just can't do it all. Right. And I just need to focus on one thing and really provide for myself in that way, bring that fulfillment in myself to, to accomplish the things that I want in that direction. So like, for instance, it was boxing, like boxing was something recent for me where now I'm, I would say that I'm pretty damn good and I'm smooth and, you know, I, I spar and I, you know, I want to fight or whatever, but like, you know, it's that focus level, right? It's that, it's that focus. You ever heard, you ever read the book, the one thing? No, I have not, but does it have to do with, um, like flow, like flow state? Eh, in a way, but, but touch on that. Cause flow state, it, it really is like, Hey, when yeah. you're, when you're in a flow state, you just, you're like so creative and you're just like, this is what I'm doing. And you're just going along in that direction. And like everything in your life kind of just falls into place. Mm-hmm. Right. Like th- that's where I am in my life. It's like, if I go to a restaurant, even if I'm kind of like, oh, you know, I don't really want to go to that restaurant. I still go. And I end up talking to someone somehow, some way, I meet someone that is, is going to be beneficial to me in my future and my relationships. It was just like how I met you. It was, I, you know, I was looking for someone to put, put on uh, the wallpaper on or the mural on, on my wall. And I was searching, searching, searching. I called this person, that person, this person gave me this deal. And that person gave me this deal. And I finally found someone online. They were sending it to me and they were like, Oh, you got to watch out for copyright. We can't, we can't print this. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? I have the word creative and vulnerable on there. Is it fucking copyright? <laughs> and I didn't know they trademarked those words. I know. Right. And then, and then all of a sudden I found myself in your office talking shit. No, I was talking shit. I was no, I don't think you were. No, no. You were excited about what you're doing. Yeah. I was super excited. I was like, I was like kind of, I was like talking about the copyright stuff. I was like, I was like, gosh, like that, that doesn't make any sense. Whatever. I really need to get this done. And, and I almost, it was almost like I came out of a, I was almost getting to the point of like scarcity. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to find someone immediately or like, or, or everything's going to be fucked. I'm not going to be able to do this, but I was able to shift and look like very slowly at different places in Denver. And then I met you and I met ink monster and I started to learn more about you. What do you know? You did something similar to me, transformational Mm -hmm. work. And now we're sitting here on a podcast and, and what you have to offer to everyone that's listening and watching is so valuable and you're creating them. So like, it's all about the beginning. Uh, I'm a firm believer in law of attraction. Yeah. You know, I, I, I never thought about this before in my life and I never thought that it was a real thing. Uh, I thought it was hokey, you know, it's for the hippies. Um, you, do you like the Virginia Tech Hokies? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. I don't, I don't just, think I know just what that is or what that is. <laughs> it's football. It's whatever. Oh. Yeah, he's sports. He's uh, sports. <laughs> Snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> um, shred the gnar, dude. Shred the gnar. Woo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a surf. A snowboard. I shred the gnar. Can we just Team do sports. The, can we just keep uh, on going, woo, woo. After, after it, like every Everything. single time. Like, hey, you need to be passionate. You need to take the next step in your life. Woo. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but law of attraction, you yeah. know, what you put out there is what comes back to you, you know, and I think that the universe brought us together for a reason. So, so let me ask you, man, because everyone, you know, everyone can make it seem like they have everything on their shoulder. Like they're, they're perfect. Their life is great, whatever. You're vulnerable. You're authentic. You know, you, you go through stuff. I go through stuff every single day. What's one thing that, that you can kind of get vulnerable with a little bit and, and put out there that, hey, I, I actually struggle with this a little bit. It could be a relationship. It could be whatever. Like, what is something yeah. for you? And, and guys, you know, I've been going through this transformational work for a year and it's changed my life and I still struggle. Like, this is a constant practice. Yeah. Every single day of your entire life, the rest of your life, I stumble, I fall, I struggle. You know, I have fears, anxiety, stresses. Um, but I would say the number one thing that I still have a lot of practice to, to go through <laughs> yeah. is um, being sensitive and being empathetic and um, really putting myself in other people's shoes yeah. and, and getting to know them and not making everything about me. 
you know, I've been alone my whole life. I've been a survivor my whole life. I've been doing all of this my whole life on my own, by myself. There has never been somebody who helped me along the way. So um, I'm used to being shut down, isolated, you know, an island. I got this. I can do it by myself. So, you know, I'm just learning now how to not make everything about me and care about others and be sensitive to others and uh, be empathetic to others and compassionate yeah, to others. Man. It, and yeah, man. And that's that's honestly, you know, now that my awareness level of who I am and why I do what I do and where that comes from and my awareness level is on such a high level now, you know, I see myself doing it. And it doesn't make it any easier to shift, but the more I keep practicing, it's better. And uh, better. It, it's getting better. You just can't give up, just like anything else. So you know, nothing worthwhile is easy, guys. Ever in, yeah. in every aspect of life. Yeah, and and you know, man, I'll, I'll get vulnerable vulnerable with you. So, uh, it, <laughs> growing up, anybody like actually my whole entire life, anybody up until now, right to a certain point, to a certain extent, anybody that would call me a name. That anything you could say anything to my face anything it would literally go in one ear out the other mm. and all it would pass through is a little tally in my head a little tally I'm like i remember that i remember you i remember all these things throughout my whole entire life all the negative shit and all i see in my mind is like this person when they called me a crater face and i was sitting in the in the football uh, locker room and I, I, I can remember his curls in his hair. I can remember like everything. I can remember the person that was right down there uh, down the bench and like he heard over, overheard and the, the lockers are all blue and like that's what I remember. And just like you, the transformational work, busting through all of that bullshit that has held me back because this is stuff that adds up and adds up and you're it comes to a point where you're so distraught and like just not, not maybe you not yourself so much, but just like your heart, your heart's just fucked up, you know? And like now, now you recognize it. And, and I just, I recognized it because people would say nasty things to me just even recently. And it just didn't affect me. It just didn't. And that's even emotion within itself. And some people feel like they don't have a passion, whatever. There's actually a lot of passion in not having a passion. It means you're, you're, very adventurous or like you have something new to discover, you know, just like for me, when someone would say something negative to me, there's a lot to say within that. There's a lot to say, say within that. It's like, I didn't take anything in because of frustration, anger, this person in my life, my brother, my sister, maybe this friend down the block. And so that's the beauty in discovery is because you become aware first become aware again second you really become aware third then you start shifting with small things and soon enough those shifts turn into habits and discipline and then you, mm -hmm. you change it's just a rewiring a reprogramming yeah. it's a muscle memory I, I love to make gym analogies i love that you're huge into fitness me no <laughs> no I, I heard maybe something no dude you... i'm a dj oh cool yeah it's whatever DJ, so you push buttons. <laughs> oh, gosh. Sorry, DJs. I, I'm no, just kidding. Well, that was a joke. I'm a DJ. I'm a DJ. I have a really good friend who is <laughs> um, a well-known hip-hop artist, and uh, he tells people he's a DJ, and he tells people he's a button pusher. I mean, he is a DJ, and he's a sick DJ, I, but he likes to make fun. I, you know? I, I think DJing is, is, is such an art. It, it really is. is I love it. I like, love like, it. like when you're spinning, I don't know how to do the spin and all that shit. But when you're spinning, you it's your and you're like you're always pretty good. Like, yeah, that's what that was pretty good. Hey, hey, man, I'm um, I'm literally yeah. I went to school for it. Yeah, but I, I like to make <laughs> I like to make these these analogies because like we don't think about fitness, like we don't think like it doesn't have this emotional attachment like uh, that's gonna hurt my feelings. Yeah, I go yeah, to the gym, yeah. you know, like yeah. you don't have, you don't could, have like it walk, could hurt a lot maybe, of things. Yeah, but yeah. not your feelings. Your ego might be maybe hurt a little bit. Maybe your ego, your pride, maybe your image a little bit. But you're not gonna like, not the way we put our guard up in relationships or you know trying to take risk in life. You know, life is all about risk. Right. And um, but you know, muscle memory. You know, you're not gonna bench 250 pounds your first day. You can start off with 50, 60, 80, whatever, and work your way up and build that muscle memory. You know, and 
everything else in life is exactly like that. You know, how you treat people, relationships. It's all about practice. What time you use the restroom. What time, you know, your, your schedule. You know, all, all of it. <laughs> you know, you so restroom. unless you're practicing. Uh, pretty frequently. <laughs> Very regular. <laughs> Discipline, baby. Yes. That's consistency. Feels, feels he great. rewired that. <laughs> yeah. Feels amazing. <laughs> feels amazing. But um, yeah, I, but, but dude, that, that's amazing. Like, it's rewiring. and It takes a lot of practice. A lot yeah, of, it just practice. It's not an overnight, you know, like changing from within isn't an overnight success. Yeah. You know, it takes time. It takes tons of effort. It takes risking. It takes failing and stumbling and falling and getting up and trying again. And that's why I say how you do one thing is how you do everything. How you show up in one area of your life is how that's going to spill over into every area of your life. Yeah. So, you know, keep trying, keep practicing, keep stumbling and falling and risking and making mistakes and trying again. The most successful people on this planet failed dozens of times. Yeah. Dozens. And just make sure that you're surrendering a lot, a lot that you have. Don't sacrifice things, but like surrender, be the person that's okay here. You know what you're doing. You're giving, you're giving some of your power away. You're, you're, you're it like, takes great courage to be humble. Cause when you give power, you're actually, when you, when you're giving power to someone else, you're actually bringing a lot more power to yourself. Yeah. That's an interesting, your, your own self-respect, your own self-esteem, you're your, your own, own machine. Confidence. You're your yeah. own machine. You're actually oiling your machine when you're giving to someone else. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. It's like a magnetic field. Like everything is just like, boom, you know? So well, we just live in a society where it's all about me. Everything's about me, my Instagram, my Facebook, my, my followers, my likes, you know, my selfies. Everything's about me, taking care of me. Um, we're, we're so just focused on this, this um, survival mode mentality. But where do you think that comes from? Comparison mode from generations and generations of marketing, branding, society, mm. MTV, now social media. Whoa, whoa, you know, whoa, like whoa. All of it. Dude, don't mess with MTV, man. <laughs> dude, I don't even know what it stands for. I just but sounded dude, like my, that's my grandfather. Ah, that's MTV. I mean, it's, Snapchat. It's reality <laughs> shows. You know, it's, 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 yeah. it's society and what we're taught to believe and we're, how we're taught and wired and programmed to think and feel and act and what makes us, we, if we have these certain things, then we'll be good enough. If I have the right clothes, the right car, the right girlfriend, the right this, the right that, the right job, I will be good enough. And we're, we're programmed to think that we're not good enough unless, and maybe we think that, you know, from our mothers or our fathers or brothers and sisters that we're not worthy to even have all of those things. So we spend our whole life sabotaging and self-destructive. So, you know, where does it come from? Our families. And yeah. society and, and all this sociological programming where it's all bullshit. None of it really matters, you know? So when we stop making everything about us or me, I should say, I'm going to say me. Yeah. You know, that's where the growth comes in. So what do we, so, so, so where does, where do people start? Where, where, where should people go? Uh, should it be a book? Read a book? Should it be, hey, actually just start becoming aware of the things that you're doing to people around you? Look at, how about, how about this? Actually, I'll give something. When you're around your closest friends, look at when there's an argument that proceeds or something happens where there's a weird mixture of energy. Look at that situation and see what's going on and see why it arised. Maybe you were late. Maybe the other person was late. Maybe they said something about a, another friend that bothered you and you didn't even recognize it, but now you do. And you're like, wait a second, this person actually said something about my friend. This is my best friend. Is he saying this about me or is she saying this about me? Wait a second. I said something about this. I said something about Chris. I said something about Alexa. Or, you know what I mean? And soon enough, you, you look at it. You're like, whoa, okay. I actually do the same thing. And I need to not talk about people. So like, what's one thing that you would, you would recommend outside of just talk, like seeing, being aware of like around your best friends? Well, I'm definitely a firm believer in the people you surround yourself with. Right. You know, you look at your closest friends and that's a reflection of who you are. Um, and I also believe in surrounding yourself with people that will always improve who you are. You know, um, we have a tendency to surround ourselves with people that, 
aren't necessarily beneficial to I, I don't the comforting. Say, it's the easy. It's, it's the comfort zone, yeah. right? Uh, to push you and motivate you and inspire you and encourage you, you know. But um, you know, I, I've read so many self help books and motivational books and this is and this and that. But you know, really. The, the change came from within. Like I said before, you, you got to really take a good hard look at your past. You know, who did what to you when, what happened, what circumstance, what experience in life, you know, gave you that wall, that mm. trigger, that reactive behavior, you know, that I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. That's good for them. That can't happen to me. That can't happen for me. You know, that's only good for them. You know, well, how do people become movie stars and rock stars and billionaires? I mean, we're all just people, you know, why do we put people on a pedestal? Like we can't be that person, Yeah. you know, so what's holding you back? And, uh, it, it's really just, um, taking a good hard look at those things. And similar and, to what I said. Cool. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I had to do, do the, the work. You got to put in the work. You got to be willing. You got to be humble. You got to be courageous. And you got to be open. And, and don't fucking bullshit yourself and be like, I'm good. You know, get a coach. You know, have yeah. an accountability, buddy. You can't do this on your own. You're never, you're, you're, you you're don't gonna, have it figured out. You never have it figured out. <laughs> you think Muhammad Ali always had boxing figured out? You think Michael Jordan always had No, they had a coach. Basketball? They all have coaches. They all Sean have White has a coach. <laughs> I actually know Sean White's. So her, uh, I'm his, friends with Sean White's coach. Okay, so so do you know his uh, PT Esther no, Esther no, Lee? No, it's like like they're like very very close. She travels. Anyway, she worked. She did a lot of body work with me, cool. and she even has a different perspective on life and like and like what she's experienced because she's traveled with these guys mm -hmm. and girls that are crazy athletes and also big movie stars and like they literally have coaches. Everyone, my coaches have coaches. You know, they're coaching movie stars and famous athletes and, you know, very, very successful people, millionaires, billionaires, and they have coaches and their coaches have coaches. The minute you think you know it all, you're done. Yeah. You know, you're either green and growing or ripe and rotting. Yeah. Right. Either what's next. And avocados, those are tricky. Uh, and you look at those avocados and they're perfect. freaking, like you just gotta, dude, you don't even know. Just by the way, by the way, if you ever grab an <laughs> avocado, okay. And you need to find out quickly if it's good or not. You take it and you pop the little pot, the thing on the top of it, and you look at it. And if it's if it's not green anymore and it's turning like a darker color, it's ripe and it's ready to eat. Mm. I'm gonna try that out. I know because I I am an avid avocado. Really, buyer, Whole yeah, Foods avocado. should sponsor this right now. Yeah, because I'm a, I'm Love a avocados. avid I'm an avid avocado eater eater. <laughs> Welcome to the eatery channel by yeah. Brendan Myers and. Yeah. So, so, okay. This so, has been like, you a, know, this like people think, oh, I, I don't need to, I don't need to, I'm good where I'm at. I'm good. Yeah. Are you good? We're not even good. We're not, I'm not good. Yeah. I'm great. People, but read, <laughs> you're so successful, this, but no, I'm not good guys. You know, like we're not good. You're never good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm great. You know? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's great. Yeah, this guy's good. I'm fucking great. dude. No, but you know what, man? I, I want to, I want to start like winding it down sure. because it, it we can go on forever. Yeah, you can go on forever about like what to change, what to do this, whatever. Um, so my question to you is, man, if you were to choose, this is a very serious question. <laughs> Fuck, this is like really, yeah, this is a really should strong question. Should I be sitting question. down? No, this is a serious question. Right. You should like lay down open body, like, <laughs> like really, really pay close attention to this, be like, what's going on? If you're listening to this or watching this, I really want you to take, take, take a close look. So if you really had to choose and, and, Let's just, let's create this like crazy scenario, right? You're in the grocery store. You're walking through the fruit and the vegetable section. You see someone there, right? They're grabbing an avocado and they literally take the top of it and they open it up and it's green and they don't know that it's not ripe. What do you do? I tell them it's ripe. Make a connection. Go talk to them. There it is, baby. Voice. And that right there is how the create you experience happens i mean <laughs> how, how many people will just not say anything i dude honestly th this is this is my point behind it is i was it? I'm, I'm fucking around yeah so i'm fucking around but i'm actually creating something out of the avocado joke is that like like literally l look at your life and because this is gonna actually 
imprint in people's minds now in their like if they're watching or listening they're gonna literally think of this avocado yeah. scenario. I say, hi i'm reed hopefully it's a cute girl i'll get her name what's your <laughs> name samantha. It's samantha hi samantha i'm reed uh just letting you know that when you pop the top of that avocado <laughs> if it's brown it's perfect <laughs> give it a look here let me squeeze it for you yep it's you, know, you don't want to squeeze it because then you're going to bruise it you don't want to bruise you know it's too aggressive. No, but 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 honestly, like that's the, that's a scenario that like but we live in such a disconnected world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just be connected. You know, uh, everyone's sh so so. I, I I read a statistic recently. This is the most disconnected, lonely generation in the history of people. The we, we the least amount of communication skills. Now, oh, that's great. But what got me was we're the loneliest society that has ever lived. Yeah. We're the most disconnected, shut down, don't know how to just talk to each other. Everybody's in defense mode. Everybody's in survival mode. Everybody lives behind a screen, isn't able to just use your words and open your mouth. Everyone's so afraid of rejection, fear of being rejected, fear of what people think about you. Just open you know, up, open up. Like, like it, you know what's scary is that, and this is not a joke, it's like, when you look at retirement homes now, you're like, oh, man. Ooh. Imagine what we're going to look like in retirement homes. That shit's going to be like, like literally so isolated that we're, we're fucking dying. And, and like there's, zero, there's like zero happiness because, because the truth is, at the end of the day, it comes down to how you communicate with yourself and the relationships that are around you. And the money's not going to be there. You might have money to be able to be in that uh, in, in that retirement home or whatever, but what you're gonna have is Sally next to you. You're gonna have Chris. You're gonna have John. You're gonna have uh, Chrisma. That's that's a new name that I created. Chrisma. You're gonna have, but literally, you're gonna have all these people around you, and everyone's gonna be isolated as fuck. Yeah. And if you think of it from that perspective, and also the avocado, and like, <laughs> I know it's funny, but like, if you I really at it, that was that was a good one. Yeah, I, that's I, not I, bad. I like yeah, that I you, you know I'm a DJ, so what do you want me to tell you? I push buttons. <laughs> Brick, 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 yeah, All right. So anyways, I, I just, you know, one more final thought, like people uh, are just so afraid to be honest with each other. We're so, we're so afraid to offend people and not share how we really feel. You know, it's, it's literally not what you say, but how you say it. You know, we can talk to people and share and not be worried if we're offending somebody or what they're going to think about us and just be honest and be yeah. you. You know, be you. Great you. That, that's all. Mm. That's all we're missing in this society right now is we have to live up to this certain image. You know, I have a friend right now who's who has everything. She is beautiful. She is extremely smart. She speaks six languages. Do you like this girl? Do you want to take her on a date? I would. I would take her on a date. <laughs> She's amazing. I feel right. you. Man. She. I feel you. She. God you know, bless. family has all the wealth they could possibly yeah. need. You know, she's brilliant. She is adventurous. She does a lot of different things. She has it all. And yet she's paralyzed in fear of what people think about her or yeah. acting a certain way or doing a certain thing. You know, she's very closed and shut down and she can't express herself and she sh sabotages her relationships because she doesn't want people to let people in and get close to her, yeah. you know, because her identity is in what people think, you know. And it's like, man, you have it all, you know, and you're already created. You're already created and you're already you. And why are you? We, oh my gosh, dude. Why, this why, is why do we feel like we're not enough? Being you is not enough. Being the authentic, genuine version of yourself isn't enough. And when you can shift and, and realize that I am enough, I am good enough, smart enough, I don't, you know, the comparison to me versus everybody else, I'm just me. And that's great. Yeah. Period. You know, we can start being honest with each other and start communicating and being open and, and vulnerable. And, and honestly, you know, that's going to be, that has been what has taken my business from going here uh, you know, the rise, the fall, the rise again. And that's why my law of attraction, what I'm putting out there, I'm attracting a completely different person in my life. Yeah. You, uh, every girl that I come in contact with. Wow, I'm in my, the same combination. I'm in like the same talks of all the beautiful girls that you come in contact with. This is great. 
I, I attracted it. you into my life. The universe Not, brought us together. I, yeah, I attracted you into my life. Yeah. Thank we you, attracted brother. each other. Thank you, our- brother. Thank you, brother. <laughs> I appreciate that, brother. You know, and that's, and that's how it works. What you put out there is what you're going to get back. And it took a lot of change work. from yeah. within. It took a lot of work. That's amazing. You know? and, and, and not took, is taking. Yeah, and it's going to continuously do so. So, yeah. dude, before we go, I just want to ask you one last question. <laughs> no, no, this is, this is, is a this real as serious no, as the last no, no, one? No. So if you were at a dinner table, and I try and ask this to, to most guests, if you're at a dinner table and you can invite three people to that dinner table with you, who would they be? Mm. My father. Outside of your, your family. Uh, three people. Hmm. At the dinner table, three people outside of my family. Man. Come on. Jesus. Okay. Number one. Dude, that's, that's he a- would be at my dinner table if that was possible. Um. And who inspires me? Let's see. So Jesus is you number know, one. You know, who, Come on, I'm, get, I'm give us think, two more. I'm trying to think about who uh, inspires me. Gandhi, and, would it be? Yeah, that came to mind. But Muhammad no. Ali, would it be a, an athlete? I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm particular and partial to athletes, like Michael Jordan. You know, what got him to that level? You know, he wasn't the best athlete. So Michael Jordan. You know, okay, I'll what's your third Jordan. one? What's your third one? Give us something snowboarder it could be a, a a mentor to you it could be someone big time small doesn't matter it could be a guy at the local grocery store who would it be there's a guy i never met before in real life his name is wilbur a friend of mine talks to me about this person on a regular basis mm. he's suffered great tragedy in life yeah and he's, he's, I don't know, in his 80s. Shit. And he, he recently lost his wife of like 50 years. I don't know the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everything I hear about this guy is the most positive, inspirational, encouraging, motivating thing. And just to, I, I like to surround myself with people who, you know, aren't the victim, you know, aren't pointing the finger. You know, and he's turned tragedy into purpose. Yeah. And he's reinvented himself and created a new life for himself. Uh, I just thought of another person by Who? telling this story. Red Man. Mm. The funk doctor. Mm. Reggie Noble. Uh, Isn't it interesting, like, like really quick, because I, I do want to end this, is like when you, when you talk about all these, all these people, especially Jesus, like <laughs> it, it really explains who you are. It really shows who you are now and where you're looking to go. Mm. Yep. Because you're influenced by more than just you. You're influenced by other people's stories and what mm-hmm. they created and what they can create and what they, even when they said they couldn't create something, they still did. You know, like you're so interested in all these different things and it really shows your growth and your transformation. Like I'm the same way. I, I invite certain people to my table and it's literally people that, that, maybe I don't want to say that I'm inspired by. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to say it because it makes me uncomfortable because I feel like I'm on the same wavelength as them. So I'm like, I don't want to say it. But the truth is, it's like Gary Vee. It's Tony Robbins. It's, it's. I would love Gandhi. I would love Muhammad Ali. I would love Kobe Bryant. I would yeah. love LeBron James. LeBron. You know, like all these people are so influential to me. Even like Nipsey that just that just passed. Like, mm-hmm. like all these people, Tupac. I would love to have Tupac here. I would love to like really dive into each and every one of these these souls because I think it's amazing. Ed Sheeran, like mm. like when you think about all these people, like even Selena Gomez, you know, like Ariana Grande. I would love to just have dinner. I, I would also like to take Ariana Grande on a date. That's whatever. <laughs> but you know what I mean. So yeah. so if you're listening or watching right now, remember it, it all starts from within, and you have a choice. You can transform. A, a, any way that you want. And that's the truth. You just choose. That's what it is. And you get yeah. to choose who's at your table. And that table is really in your mind. And that's what you're creating Everything if it's in your choice. heart. So remember that as you go through life and you keep pushing towards your passion and you create your vision, you have something in there. 100%. So don't hold back and don't create this scenario in your life that you feel like there's nothing there and then it'll never happen in your life. Just trust the process and keep on chugging. So, yeah. Read. I, 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 before we close, I, I really, you know, talking about this table, uh, th- this person, Redman, has become a really good friend of mine over the past uh-huh. seven, eight years. 
we worked together. We did some shows together. Um, we instantly bonded. You know, we, we had this connection, you know, uh, just like we did, just like you yeah, and yeah. I, you know, like we just know that we know that, you know, we're inspirational, motivational, positive people. We, we have, we're living life a certain way. Uh, and then over the years, I really got to know him as a friend. You know, first I was a fan, and now we're friends. Yeah. He is probably one of the most inspirational people in my life. Yeah. That's You know, we could talk about Jordan. We could talk about Gandhi. All yeah, these people Man, that, yeah. that we know of. Right. But who in my life is the most inspirational and motivating? And I'd say this man has... He encourages me every day. He challenges me. Uh, the trials, tribulations, struggles, the man has been up and down and up and down a hundred times over. You know, he's been successful. He's lost it all. He's been successful. You know, he's he still, you know, 40-something years old, traveling the world, touring the world, still making albums. You know, he has, you know, he's committed a F to his family. Yeah. You know, he's... You know, he's committed to his faith. So he represents you know? what you, what you're... He's constantly reinventing himself and adapting and shifting and changing. And, and even he is realizing that, you know, his ego is not running the show. Mm. You know, his pride is not running the show. You know, he, he is the epitome of passion and purpose and doing what you love. Because longevity does not exist without passion and purpose. And if you look at his Instagrams and his, and, and, um, his Facebook, all his social media, everything is all about personal development and personal growth and motivating and constantly inspiring and yeah. encouraging. And no matter how successful he is, by the way, he has uh, more albums than I think, I think it's like Tupac, uh, uh, Dre. I mean, he literally has... I think more albums than most any rapper in history. I don't know the numbers. It's close. He has like 12 albums. But he's albums. always focused on personal development, and that's what's so and inspiring. He treats you. every single person with respect and gratitude. And it, like he's never, I've never seen him turn any fan away or do anything to make somebody feel bad about themselves. So, he, so that's why, that's where I'm like, wow. Like, and I look at myself and I, I've realized how much growth there is for me, like how much improvement there could be for me when I look at somebody at, you know, what I, who I could have put on a pedestal at one point and now just use as an inspirational leader in my life and, and, um, you know, somebody I look up to, you know, and, and then he says that, and then somebody like that, he says the same thing to me. It's like, I look up to you because of what you're doing in your life, you know, so who you surrounding surround yourself, yourself with. with, yes, you know, so and we that, are, you know, fueling each other. Yeah. You know, it's not one-sided. We're, we're surrounding each other with people who, you know, we're inspiring each other, encouraging each other, motivating each other, lifting each other up when we're down, you know? So, um, you know, that's who I'd want at my table. That, fuck yeah, that's a good way to end, man. That's a good way to end. <laughs> I, I, like, seriously, that, that was a great way to end. And guys, surround yourself with the people that you want. Like, point blank, like the people that you would like around you. It's as simple as that. If you want someone famous around you, it's like surround yourself with that mentality of like, like you want, you want maybe, maybe not the the bad things that they have or whatever, but like look at the positives and why you want that, and and really just just work towards yourself because you're gonna attract exactly what you want. You will by being that person for yourself. And if you if you're like all about money, then you're literally gonna attract like other people that are all about money, and it might not be the best thing for you. So be focused on on like what you truly, truly want in your life and the vision that you set forth. I, I almost guarantee it's not money. It's, it's not money. It's way deeper than that. Cause money, it, like money, that attraction, that's just a relationship. And what you're really looking at is a relationship and that love and that feeling of gratitude and, and all of those other feelings that come with having something that, that you, you love and you brings a lot of enjoyment. So stay focused, stay purpose driven. And keep on pushing towards your vision. Remember, create you. Welcome again to the Create You experience. If this is your first time. Go ahead and subscribe. Also in the de description box, if you're on YouTube, or you can go into the show notes, you can check out the link and you can get seven free products when you review the show on iTunes. Read, where can they find you? Inkmonster.com. 
no e in monster i n k m o n s t r at ink monster check out our instagram we have a great youtube channel cool tons of cool videos concerts events parties that we've done to create the brand uh, all the custom projects we've done uh time lapses uh, i mean there there's Wait, some really great yes time lapses YouTube. that's some real shit you know yeah. That's serious. He's got time lapses, guys. <laughs> no kidding. That's well, you know, people like to see how it's done. No, right? no, no. We, we got a great how it's made page. Well, you saw YouTube, it today. So. You saw it today here on the Create You Experience and here on YouTube. Remember, we're on all audio platforms. So thank you for tuning in. Always tune in each week. We have a new show coming. Thank you, Reed, for joining us once again. Brendan, it was, well, I love this stuff, man. Yeah. And, and I was really looking forward. When you asked me to be on this show, I was like, Psh. You were hiding it. I, I was, you were hiding in your little non communicated <laughs> emotions. You were like, I was really oh, stoked. Yeah, I was, I was, Sweet. I was, well, it was a, it's a privilege and an honor to be yeah. on. Thank, Thank you, you, Reed. Appreciate it. Everyone, stay tuned for next episode. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Take care, America. Peace. I fell down, got up. I'm unbreakable. Anything in my way, I'm a breakthrough. Lights, camera, action, take two. Can't worry about what they do. You got to create you.